The majesty of the setting belies the ugliness of the event. White Tower! Hail Robert Matthews! On Whidbey Island in Puget Sound, this is an alliance of anger and hate. And they're looking for answers, so they, they look to us and see what kind of answers they can get. Disenchanted teenagers from city streets, they call themselves skinheads, are now being recruited by old line white supremacists. They recruit us, so they, they write us and ask us for help. I'm extending Hitler's cause, I'm fighting for it still today. Because a lot of that he did was right. When the skinhead movement started, the music, the uniform, the boots, the tattoos, were more a fashion statement than a fascist statement. But with the symbols in place, the indoctrination began. Skinheads. The kids were all dressed up. Now they've got somewhere to go. They're a generation of whites that have lost out. We recruited skins in many cities all over the United States that have started up little units here and there. In Mississippi, the extreme right has given skinheads lessons in firearms and intolerance. Jews to Israel, uh, Mexicans to Mexico, uh, Puerto Ricans to Puerto Rico. Where people feel they're happy, let them have their freedom, but leave America in peace. In Spokane last week, a skinhead was convicted of attempted murder. Provoked by nothing more than racial hatred, he stabbed a black man. In Portland, an Ethiopian immigrant was clubbed to death in November. Three skinheads are charged with his murder. Two skinheads were arrested in the stabbing death of a black transient in Tampa. Across the country, there has been a wave of assaults, graffiti, intimidation. The highest concentration of skinhead violence is on the West Coast. In the last two months, we've seen a real increase in, in large groups of skinheads, large groups being anywhere from a dozen to 20 skinheads uh, assaulting two a max of, uh, of three people. Skinheads are not into making money. Skinheads are into spreading hate. In spite of their violent impact, there are not very many neo-Nazi skinheads. One recent count puts their number at 2,000 spread across 21 states. Here in Seattle, there are perhaps two dozen. But police say that's enough to account for an increase in violence in the city since September. Do you favor violence? I don't necessarily favor it, but if I'm provoked to, I'll fight. See you later. Bye. Have a good day. Reverend Terry Morgan spends most of his time on Seattle's streets, where he's known as the padre of the punks. He understands the appeal of extremist politics to those who have little to lose. It does give them a sense of belonging. Uh, which they wouldn't have any place else, a sense of identity. Down the coast in Portland, there are probably 60 hardcore skinheads. What are you fighting against? To destroy the Zionist occupational government. And what is the Zionist occupational government? All the minorities that are in the country, the Jews that control our government, the foreigners that are controlling our government right now. Violence is being given as an alternative. Uh, to the kind of fears and anxieties many of these kids have out on the streets. Uh, it gives an organized uh, uh, solution to their problem. How many of you are Nazis? For many skinheads, the violence seems more important than the ideology. When you go out booting on the fags, you prevent the spread of AIDS. What do you call it, booting? Yeah, you don't use your fist, you use, use your, your boot. <laughs> that way when his blood comes out of his mouth, it don't get in the cut on your hand from punching him in the teeth, and you don't get AIDS. Basically, I love intimidating people, you know. The bigger they are, and if you intimidate them, you know, it's funny, you laugh about it. Those who battle racism are watching carefully this alliance of hate and Hell anger. They hope these are no more than young hooligans. Hell but they fear the nation's hardcore racist movement is being revitalized by the skinheads' youthful rage. John Blackstone, CBS News, Seattle.